Welcome to Mono Modular 101. I will be your host, James Westfall. Um, I built this stuff, and it's free, it's open source, so why not use it? Um, <clears throat> it's going to be a lot better to you if you have Mono Modular Suite and Max for Live, but even if you don't, the remote control script is, uh, is pretty cool. You can get to most aspects of your project uh, through a button press or two. Um, the first thing you have to do in order to install it is go to your live application bundle, show package contents, open up contents, app resources, and MIDI remote scripts, and drop those two scripts in there. Uh, the first one is Monome, and that's going to uh, support both the OM64 RGB as well as the monochrome. And if you're using Max for Live, then you need the mono modular script in there as well. Um, once you get that done, you can close those folders and open up your uh, MIDI sync preferences in Ableton Live. You want to restart live after you've installed that stuff as well. Uh, assign the monome to one of the slots and make sure that OMRGB controls port is set to both input and output. And if you're using mono modular, then make sure that it's inserted in a slot. Uh, you don't need an input or an output for it. Uh, in fact, it might mess things up if you do that. I, I don't know. Uh, try it out. Let me know how it works. So once I get that done, I can close the preferences screen. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is in a MIDI track, I'm going to open up the OM64 LC, LCD patch. Uh, it's going to give me some feedback as far as what it is that I'm controlling. And you see that it's open down there at the bottom. Uh, if you hit LCD, it'll bring the LCD up. And if you turn on Auto Hide, then it will go away whenever you're not touching anything. Ta-da! Uh, only trouble with that is it switches focus from the live application. So it can be kind of a pain in the ass if, uh, if you're actually using your keyboard and mouse because you have to click on Ableton to get it back in focus. Um, so we're going to turn that off, but we'll leave the LCD up. Basically, the way the script works uh, when it loads up is you're in split mixer mode. So these four channels and these four channels are separate from one another. Um, there's two buttons next to the crossfader, and they're your shift buttons. Uh, one's for the left mixer, one's for the right mixer. If I hold down the shift button, it will bring up the zoom screen so that I can move around the project. You'll see the little red box move around where I click different places. Works just like an APC or launch pad. Uh, the top five rows control your navigation. And uh, this button here will change the crossfader assignment for whichever fader is next to it. Uh, this turns record on and off. This turns overdub on and off. This turns loop on and off. Uh, if I have some clips playing, and start some clips recording on those tracks, then I can stop all the clips by hitting that fourth There's button on the sixth row. Ta-da! Uh, also, if I have a clip playing, I can stop it by hitting shift and the bottom button in its row. Um, these four underneath the faders are the channel select. So I've just selected channel one, uh, channel two, channel three. And when I have a channel selected in the first mode, these four knobs will control the send level. These four knobs over here will control the return level. The top eight knobs our device control and this is best demonstrated by dropping a device into one of those channels so I'm gonna throw a chorus on channel one and hit shift to update and uh, now I have control of those parameters you'll notice that they automatically map to the LCD at the bottom too so I can see exactly what it is that I'm controlling very nice um, so if I hold down shift you'll notice that the channel select buttons on the bottom change color. Uh, 
on the same side as the shift, I can change modes by pressing one of those buttons. And you'll notice that the backlight changes uh, when I change modes just so that I don't forget that I'm in that mode. Um, so I'm going to go back to mode 1. Actually, I'll go to mode 2 since we've already been through mode 1. And in mode 2, each one of the uh, knobs above the fader are going to control the sends 1 through 3 for that particular fader. If I had three sends, you'd see that it would be moving. Um, in mode 3, and again, I get there by holding down shift and hitting one of the channel select buttons. Notice the backlight changed again. And now, if I have a filter in the track, I'll be controlling the filter. Filter cutoff. Filter gain and pan for that particular channel. If I go to mode 4, nothing's happening. There's a good reason for that. Um, mode 4 is user mappable, so if I go and enter MIDI assignment mode, then I can grab whatever I want and map it to the knobs. There we go. And you notice that uh, I'm hitting shift. A lot of times when you make changes in your project, the remote script doesn't catch them until you update it. The easiest way to do that is just to hit shift. It'll update the entire screen. So if uh, something's not happening the way you think it should, uh, hit shift. Can't hurt. Um, so I've added some more tracks, just some MIDI tracks, uh, so that we can work with the right mixer. Um, the right mixer modes basically are just changing the orientation of what these faders are assigned to. Uh, normally, if there's more than four tracks in a project, they're going to be assigned to tracks five through eight. Uh, of course, I can assign them to whatever I want by navigating on the zoom for the session grid, but I can also navigate uh, by using the mode buttons. Uh, Mode 1 is going to be channels 5 through 8, mode 2 is going to be channels 9 through 16, or 9 through 12, and mode 3 is 13 through 16. Uh, in addition, mode 4 will assign the faders to the returns, and it gives me control of the pan for the returns as well. So as long as I'm in mode 1 on the left mixer, and mode 4 on the right mixer, then I not only have control with the faders over my returns and with the knobs of my pan for my returns, I can select my returns and I can control the auxiliary levels for them. Um, that's pretty much it. See, it's not all that complicated. So you may have noticed that whenever I changed over to mode 4 on the right mixer, uh, with the return levels on the faders, that uh, the grid changed color into a big block of magenta. This is the pad translation layer uh, for drum racks, so that if I have a drum rack installed on a track and I assign its MIDI input from the monome, I want monitor input, then I can play those drums whatever's visible um, directly from the pads. There's no velocity. Sorry, I might get around to that eventually, but for now, that's what you get. So I'm going to go back to uh, mode one on both mixers and uh, look at the function buttons up here on the top right. Uh, basically, you have play, stop, and you can navigate on a per slot basis for the left mixer. The right mixer has no such control. You have to uh, you have to navigate by bank with it. Um, there's just not enough buttons. But you should be able to also use the modes to get around it pretty well. Now, uh, the linked mixer. 
We've looked at the left mixer and the right mixer. We can link the two of them together just by holding down one shift and pressing the other. So now, instead of controlling four tracks on each one, I have eight tracks between the two. Same thing, right? Yeah, essentially, uh, but they're linked. So when I move one of them, the other one moves in the same place. Otherwise, the modes are exactly the same as they were for the left mixer. Uh, one nice thing about having the linked mixer is it gives me a different position uh, to store where I'm at in the session. So if I go out of the linked mixer, I go back to 1 through 4 here and 5 through 8 here. And then I link the mixer and I'm automatically at 9 through 16. So very quickly you can get back and forth between 16 channels uh, with only an 8 channel mixer. Just one way of doing things. So the, uh, the Monom script allows you to drop a velocity plugin onto a MIDI track. And it will automatically lock to the velocity out high of that plugin as long as it's the first one in the chain. Thus giving me a volume control over my MIDI tracks. Then I can send them out elsewhere and do whatever I want to with them. You'll notice also that whenever it's locked to a velocity plugin, instead of giving you a decibel readout on the LCD, it gives you 0 through 127, which is what you want for MIDI. Let's see, one other thing I can show you. Um, if I hold down Shift, these four blinking yellow lights, those are send resets. They allow me to zero out all the sends in a project on regular tracks just by hitting one button. So if you watch send levels one for all of my tracks, I press the button, they go to zero. Send levels two, press the button, they go to zero. Makes it very easy to turn your return up, add some effects, add some more effects. Don't like those effects anymore, turn the return down, zero out the sends, turn the return back up and start all over again. All right, kids, I hope that gets you started. Um, enjoy, and uh, let me know if you have any ideas.